This is the new Doji V30 Pro when great specs meet great protection. Hi everyone, this is JD, your gadget review friend. Welcome and welcome back to Gadget Rev Now. Rugged phones are usually niche phones that provides the ultimate protection but kinda sucks on the specification. But what if you can get a phone that is rugged, gives you that military grade protection, but arguably can compete with a higher mid-range phone, even flagship phones? Today, Doji sent us the V30 Pro, but as always, this will be an independent review of Gadget Rev now. We will unbox this phone, talk about the features, and do our full review. Let's go to work! First, we will do the unboxing and first impression, but if you'd like to jump to the other parts of the video, like the full review, I will leave the timestamp on the description below. Let's start with the unboxing, and if you'd like to purchase this product after this video, I will leave the link in the description below. Doji sent us the new V30 Pro with 512GB of storage and 12GB of RAM. It is expandable to 32GB using the internal storage. So this model comes with a European charger, it has 2 IMEI, so it has 2 SIM card slot, and it has a high resolution audio. Opening the box, you'll have the Doji V30 Pro, and I think this is the red accent key. Later we will check this phone, but for now, let's check what else is inside the box. We also have the paperwork with the limited warranty which you can fill out. We also have a screen protector. This is not tempered glass so just so you know. They also added the cleaning cloth for the screen protector and we have the certification information and the user manual. And lastly at the bottom of the box you'll have the USB-C charging cable. We also have a 30 watts fast charging block. It's good to know that if you purchase this phone, you will have a free charger out of the box. I think that's it for this unboxing, now let's unpack this phone. This is the new Doji V30 Pro, you have the volume rocker on the upper right corner, on the upper left you have the SIM card slot, you have the charging port at the bottom. And this is advertised to have IP68 and military grade protection. Inspecting the phone, the back is plastic but it has a leather texture to it. And on the side you have a sturdy metal that houses the buttons. At the bottom you have a rubber seal for the USB-C port. And on one side you have the red accent key and the SIM card slot. The SIM card tray can be easily pulled using your fingernail. You can either have dual SIM card or a SIM card plus TF card if you need to stand your storage. This rugged phone already has 512 gigs of internal storage. At the bottom you have the microphone and you can easily pull out the rubber flap on the charging port. And lastly on the other side you have a silver accent power button that also acts as your fingerprint sensor and the typical volume rocker. And at the back you have a big circular camera module that looks like Huawei P60 or even the OnePlus phone. Obviously it has nothing to do with the size of the sensor but more on aesthetics or design. It has a triple camera sensor with an ambient flash. So yeah, I think that's it for the unboxing, design, and build. Now let's open the phone for the first time. Let's quickly check the specification of the phone from the Android operating system, the camera features. We will do a benchmark test and test how fast the fingerprint sensor is. By the way, I noticed that there's already a pre-applied screen protector on this phone. I think it's a tempered glass, so just so you know, let's connect this phone and set it up for the first time. Alright, this is how the home screen look like. Now let's check the specification of the phone. This phone has 12 gigs of internal RAM and you can always expand it to 32 gigs with the 20 gigs of internal storage. Checking the other specification, it has 512 gigs of internal storage, a 6.58 screen with full HD resolution, and it has 10,800 milliampere battery that will last you for a few days for sure. This phone comes with Android 13 out of the box and as you can see on the screen technology, it does the outdated waterfall notch that you can probably see on a smartphone 4 to 5 years ago. Next is side key function, so we will assign the screenshot on one click, open flashlight on double click, and open the underwater camera on triple click. Now let's check the camera feature so you have the photo as a default on the camera app. The autofocus is not as fast as the one you can see on other smartphones, but the image is pretty sharp if it locks focus on the image. 
We also have the video feature and can shoot 4K videos. So on this price point, you have a decent specs with a phone that can shoot 4K video recording. We also have the black and white night vision feature if this camera needs to see on pitch black condition. At the left end of the camera app, you have the wide angle lens and this is a separate sensor from the main one. The image quality is really good. It is sharp and has details on it. We also have the 200 megapixel sensor and checking on the file size on the image, it is 12,000 by 6,000 resolution that is total to 19 megabytes of storage. Aside from the night vision, we also have the typical night shot which is called Super Night and you have the Pro Mode, Portrait Mode, Panorama, Slow Motion and Macro which I think is using the wide angle sensor. We will give you sample photos and videos of this phone on our full review but for now let's connect this phone on the internet and download Geekbench 6 to see how fast this phone is. And while waiting for the benchmark test to finish, let's quickly do a rundown of the specification. This phone is running on MediaTek Dimensity 7050, which is as fast as Dimensity 1080, 32 gigs of RAM. We have a 6.58 inch Full HD screen with 120Hz refresh rate, a huge battery that supports 33 watts of fast charging. The selfie camera is a Sony 32 megapixel sensor, and this phone supports Wi Fi 6, and the front firing speaker is a high resolution one. The construction or build quality of this phone is pretty solid. I don't feel any loose buttons. And because of the tall aspect ratio, it is easy to hold in one hand. So we have 925 in single core and 2565 in multi cores. That's really impressive number for a mid range phone. This could definitely play some heavy games and open some high intensive apps. We will do some gaming tests on this phone and let you know on our full review. And lastly, let's set up the fingerprint sensor and test how fast this is. So opening this phone, I don't have any issue with the fingerprint sensor. If biometric fingerprint is your chosen security feature on a phone, then this feature will work well on this phone. So I think that's it for the unboxing and first impression. We will test this phone for a few days and we will give you a full review of Doji V30 Pro. Alright, so after a few weeks of testing this phone, this is everything you need to know about Doji V30 Pro. First, let's talk about the performance of this phone. And at the beginning, I said this phone can rival the top tier mid-range phone and it did not disappoint. Playing games with this phone for almost a couple of weeks now, I never really had any issue playing Mobile Legends or other games that needs a little bit of resources from the processor and RAM. In fact, on Mobile Legends, you can play the game on super high frame rates and ultra graphics. So that's really good for a rugged phone. Dimensity 7050 is a really good chipset and adding the 32 gigs of physical and extended RAM, it really do wonders on this phone. And again, if gaming is not an issue on this phone, just imagine other applications. It will be a breeze of using this phone every day. This phone has a notification LED on top. If you're charging it or receiving messages, it notifies you with different colors. This phone also supports dual SIM functionality on 5G and Wi-Fi 6. The camera of this phone is just okay. I wouldn't say it's a flagship type camera phone, even a mid-range, I think. Although in terms of design, it really has a really good looking camera module at the back. The image quality is passable, I should say a solid 6 out of 10. I would say the image quality is a bit better than the video. The autofocus is not the fastest to be honest and you have to be really patient shooting your subject or else you get blurry photos every time. As well as the video, when I'm shooting using the rear camera, I need to count at least 2-3 to three seconds for me to start the recording because the autofocus will hunt my face first then locks in. The image quality is good, a little bit saturated, the white balance is neutral, but it has a great feature like night vision, which really takes night shot into a whole new level using the monochrome night vision sensor. You also have a 200 megapixel image. I don't think there's a lot of difference comparing it to a regular 12 megapixel JPEG, but it's there when you need it. It can shoot 4K video and there's also an EIS or electronic image stabilization if you need it, but it crops in the video a little bit. Here's the sample footage. This is the video recording feature of Doji V30 Pro using the rear camera, shooting in 4K 30 FPS without EIS, so the image quality is a little bit wobbly while I'm walking. Now let's switch this video with EIS. So now we're recording still in 4K 30 FPS with EIS or electronic image stabilization. The video is a little bit punched in. It will crop in and like do the stabilization electronically. But this is the quality of the video in 4K 30 FPS with EIS. Now we're using the selfie camera of the GV30 Pro without EIS. So again, this video recording might be a little bit shaky. So if you want to vlog using this phone, this will be the output using the selfie camera. Now let's check the video quality with EIS. 
and this is the selfie video recording again using the selfie camera 1080p at 30 fps with eis so i think for vlogging you can use both the camera sensors again if you're using eis it's a little bit punched in so you might need to use monopod or gimbal on this phone but if you're using it handheld this is the field of view that you will get with eis the screen of this phone is really good. I mean, in terms of brightness, I can see this clearly outdoors, but it's only using an LCD technology. It's a full HD with 120Hz refresh rate at max. It is using an outdated waterfall notch, again, to lower down the cost of the phone. But if it's not a deal breaker for you, again, I think the screen is good enough for everyday use. You're only missing the pitch black colors because obviously, if you're using an LCD screen, all individual pixels will light up. I think one great thing about this phone is the speaker and even on their website they actually advertising this to be tuned by Japan Association. I think Doji or Doogi added a really good set of speakers on this phone, both top and bottom. Here's the sample. This phone is advertised to be a rugged phone, so durability is a top priority. It has IP68 and military-grade protection, and although it doesn't have a premium materials like the Gorilla Glass, it's a durable phone. The combination of plastic, rubber, and metal, and if you accidentally drop this phone, the size of the phone has thick rubber protection that will withstand accidental drops. The only thing I don't like about the construction is the camera module at the back. It's a little bit protruding, so if you put the phone face up, I think you'll be able to scratch the camera module. But I like the button layout. I can tell you that it was built really good because there's no loose buttons on this phone. And lastly, battery life. I think it's one of the strength of this phone with a 10,800 mAh battery. This would go for 5 days without charging on casual use. If I'm doing heavy gaming, I could probably squeeze this in in 2.5 days. Also, this phone can be charged by a 30 watts fast charger. And speaking of longevity, ever since I used this phone, I haven't got any updates on this phone. So that's something missing on this whole rugged phone ecosystem. But all in all, with everything it offers, I think it's a really good rugged phone. So this is the unboxing and full review of Doji V30 Pro. Is it worth it? For the past few years, I think rugged phones are slowly catching up with the competition. I mean, this phone really has good specs for a beater phone. It offers Dimensity 7050, 32 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, a good set of cameras with excellent battery life and durable construction. Doji V30 Pro is a good example of a phone when great specs meet great protection. And there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to purchase this product, I will leave the link in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.